And so this morning we've got one of these unique people who wasn't baptized as a baby, but would really like to be a really full-fledged follower of Jesus' church, and he asked if we, we could baptize him as an adult. And, you know, I often say that um, with, ba- with adults, I like to baptize them in a lake. And I suggested this to him, that we could go down to Paper Mill Lake. <laughs> but he, what do you, do you, what do you think? He said no. He said no. I, we would have had to cut a hole in the ice and baptize him. Jason, bring yourself up here, buddy. And Tony, if you want to come forward as well, you come on up here as well. If you want to come up, you come up. Jason, this is the fella I'm talking about. This is Jason. Say hi, Jason. Hi. And say, Jason, welcome. <laughs> so, Jason, yes, it, it didn't happen when you were a wee little tight like one of these kids, so, so what's, what's made you change your mind? Here, take the mic. And this is totally unscripted. This is, <laughs> he has no idea I'm going to ask him these questions whatsoever, so, but, Jason. Um, Tony, <laughs> to be honest, um, Tony came into my life, and through him I found the church. And you found faith? You found God. So, Tony, I think you better get yourself up here. <laughs> Come on up here. Get Tony up here as well. Absolutely. Give Tony a big hand, too. So, boys and girls, Jason and Tony, they found one another, and they found love, and they found God together, and we're delighted that you did. So, so I'm going to put a couple of questions to you, Jason. Now, boys and girls, these are the same questions I put to parents having babies baptized. When it's an adult, I put these questions directly to them. Okay, so Jason, I'm going to put this question to you. Do you understand Jesus to be a human window to God, one revealing to humankind the true nature and presence of God? If so, please say, I do. I do. And following Jesus' example... Will you open your life to God's spirit, inviting it to transform you and to make you a loving co-creator with God here on earth? If so, please say, I will. I will. And do you commit yourself to support the Church of Jesus Christ and its ministry? If so, please say, I do. I do. Okay. Now, I need all of us and all of you to respond to this question. As a baptized and a baptizing church, do you commit yourselves to support and nurture Jason within this community which worships God and which honors Jesus and which seeks to incarnate God's presence in the world? If so, please say, you all say this together, please say, I do make this commitment. Awesome. Okay, now bef- before we do this officially, can you get the water? Okay. Come on down. We need to put this aside over here. Let's put that down here. Okay. Tony, will you hang on to that? Sure. Nice. <laughs> Hold that up high. Maybe a little lower. Little more, and pour that water into the bowl. All of it. Every last drop. That's perfect. Okay. Let's put it back on the jug, back on the communion table. And boys and girls, I'm going to have you stand. And will you come around? And we're going to put our hands on this. Everybody put your hand on this. Okay. And I want everybody to say this repeat after me prayer. Dear God, God, bless this water water. and bless Jason, Jason, whom we're about to baptize baptize with this water. water. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's step back for a second. Jason, I'm going to invite you to stand right here beside this font, right here. Boys and girls, when we baptize babies, we, don't, we only use a little bit of water, right? <laughs> I mean, they're smaller, right? We should only use a little bit of water, but with Jason, we should probably use a lot of water, right? Okay, Jason, with this water, I... <laughs> Jason.
Jason in all seriousness. We are delighted and thrilled that you have chosen to enter on this path of faithful discipleship to God and to Jesus. And so I hereby baptize you in the name of God, our creator and source. I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, our spiritual master and friend. And I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit, God's living presence in your life. And I mark you with the sign of the cross to indicate that you are now a follower of Jesus. I'm going to invite you to stand right here. Boys and girls, I'm going to invite you all to, to come around and touch Jason. Get in there. He's a big guy, so there's lots of room. You can, you can, you can, all, get on, you can all get to him. You can all find a part of him. And if you can't quite reach, touch somebody who is touching Jason. And I'm going to invite the congregation to stand. And I'm going to invite you to lift your hands in the air like this, as we do with our children. Jason, we hereby baptize you and we confirm you into the Christian faith. And beloved God, we just invoke your blessing upon Jason. Your spirit has been alive in him for his entire life. And he has now come to recognize the presence of your spirit and your grace in his life. And we just pray that that recognition may grow and deepen and that your spirit may just grow into a blazing fire within his heart and mind and soul and bless his ongoing journey of life and make him a wonderful blessing to the world. In the name of our brother Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. I'm going to invite you. Now, will one of you... Aha, uh -huh, thank you. Thank you, Jen. Jason. Boys and girls, what we do with adults is we have a, a cross that we put around their, their heads. Whoops. <laughs> that. Jason, may you wear this cross as a reminder that you are now a follower and a disciple of Jesus. Bless you. And boys and girls, just like we give your parents... Um, a candle when you're born, and the candle represents the light, the presence of God's spirit in Jason. So we give you that, that light, and we give you this baptismal certificate, and we give him a big hand. Let's give him a great big hand. Welcome. <laughs> you can blow that out and put it into the box. Okay, now, boys and girls, I'm going to invite you to just step back a, a wee bit, okay, because we have a, uh, a few other people who aren't being baptized today, but who have chosen to become members of our church family and our church community, all right? So we're going to bring them all up here and with all of you as well, and so I'm going to invite. So these are folks who have already been baptized and confirmed in their faith, but they'd like to become officially part of our, our church community. So we're going to invite Violet Herzeg to come forward. Where is Violet? Is Violet here today? Violet, there you are. Violet, would you please come forward? And I'm going to invite Karina Holder to come forward. Where is Karina? There you are, Karina. Awesome. And Frank Mills. Some of these folks are relatively new, and some have been around forever. Frank. And... Violet, come right up forward, and Karina, you're right here, and Frank, I want you to make a little line right here, and, um, and Irma Schmidt, where is Irma? There you are, Irma, come on forward. Irma holds a special place in my heart because she's originally from Germany, and I love her dearly, and John Tatry. John is a wonderful fella as well, and uh, I'm glad to see your little guy with you this morning too, John. Welcome, John. John is a writer and uh, often works, writes for the United Church Observer, so we're delighted to have John. Kim Wilson, where are you? 
There you are, Kim. Kim has uh, not been around that long, but she's already become super involved in our Christian Development Committee. We're invited to have her. Brenda Wollner. Where's Brenda? Oh, there you are, Brenda. Brenda, delighted to have Brenda as well. And Nancy Wynn. Where is Nancy? Nancy has been here forever in our community as well and has chosen to reaffirm her membership to deepen it uh, on this day. And finally, our local drummer, Peter Morehouse. Where is Peter? Peter, come on forward as well. So, so boys and girls, when, when you're little, you become a member of the, the church community. Um, your parents bring you and you're baptized and you grow up in the church. But sometimes when, when people get older, they commit to a, a specific church. And we're delighted to have these folks all committing to our church community this morning. Now, you're going to notice that I'm going to do the same thing with them that I did with Jason. I'm going to put this bunch of questions to all of you as well. So, just, yeah, Nancy, slip forward. So, I put these questions to all of you. Do you all understand Jesus to be a human window to God, one revealing to humankind the true nature and presence of God? If so, please say, I do. And following Jesus' example, will you open your life to God's Spirit, inviting it to transform you and to make you a loving co-creator with God on this earth? If so, please say, I will. And do you commit yourself to support the Church of Jesus Christ and its ministry as expressed through Bedford United Church? If so, please say, I do. It's an absolute delight and an honor to welcome you all to Bedford United Church. And I'm just going to invite a prayer of blessing upon you all. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Oh, wonderful God, we thank you for this community of faith through which your spirit shines so brightly. And we thank you for every single one of these people who has sensed the presence of your spirit alive in this community and, and who wants to allow your spirit to shine through their individual lives, through the work and the ministry of this community. Bless every single one of them and bless us all together as collectively we express your face and your beauty and your commitment and your service in the world so much more than any single one of us ever could. In the name of our brother Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, I'm going to invite Darlene McDonald, the Vice Chair of Council. Darlene, where are you? Will you come forward? And there is a microphone here somewhere. Um, Marlene, Dar Darlene, can you just say greetings to, to folks? Is, is that turned on? And it is. Darlene, is, will you welcome folks? And while you're welcoming, we're going to stick flowers on you. And hopefully, we won't stick the pins into you, just the flowers on you. Uh -oh. Darlene, will you please? I want to welcome you all on behalf of the Council of the Bedford United Church. I'm vice chair this year, and I will be following Daryl and becoming chair. There are so many opportunities that you can join into wonderful things in this church and take a real active part, and I encourage you to do so. After service today, we'll be looking for volunteers. We're always looking for people to help out and take part in things. And um, we also have one of those small ministries um, that that is uh, an active part of this church so people get to know each other because out here and among you all are your friends. These are your friends at church in Jesus' name. Let's give him a big hand. Okay, uh, now we have got a Bible reading. Unfortunately, I don't know who's doing it. <laughs> Linda Adamson. Good morning. This morning, we hear about the beginning of Jesus' ministry, how it started with him calling disciples to work and train under him, and demonstrating the nature of the work he was to undertake throughout his ministry. As today, we celebrate the reception of new members into the Christian faith and our BUC community, we are invited to ponder what Jesus would say to each of us, how he would call us to follow him, 
if he were alive in today's world. I'm reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 to 25. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he went back to Galilee. He left Nazareth and settled in Capernaum, a lakeside town near the territory of Zebron and Naphtali. In this way, the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea on the far side of the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. On those, on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began proclaiming the message, change your hearts and minds, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he watched two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They fished by trade. Jesus said to them, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of humankind. They immediately abandoned their nets and began to follow Jesus. Jesus walked along further and caught sight of a second pair of brothers, James and John ben Zebedee. They too were in their boat, mending their nets with their father. <coughs> Jesus called them, and immediately they abandoned both boat and father to follow him. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of heaven, and healing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses among the people. His fame spread through Syria, and people suffering from illnesses and painful ailments of all kinds those who were demon-possessed, those who were epileptic, those who were paralyzed, were brought to Jesus and he healed them. Large crowds followed Jesus, coming from Galilee, the Decropolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and Transjordania. May the Spirit grant us inspiration and wisdom from this reading. And Linda, thank you so much for sharing that reading with us. So, Jason, congratulations again. Great having you on board. It's just a delight, okay? Now, baptizing you this morning was so much fun. The next time I'm going to have that much fun is baptizing. Take a look right back there in that corner. There's Heather Boucher with Harrison, and he's just five weeks old. And Heather made a comment to me. I, just this morning I asked her, I said, Heather, so how's it feeling? And how is it? And, and Heather says to me, it's such a weird feeling, but such a special feeling holding your heart on the outside of your body. Love you. Um, I also, Don and Lorraine Poole are here this morning. Do you remember them? Stand up, you two. Now, they receive, they, they get a special word of welcome. They got up at 5.30 this morning in Charlottetown just to be here for worship at BUC. They've been here over the, over the years, and then they had to move back to Charlotte to, to PI. I think, is it Charlottetown, or where are you? In Char yeah. yeah, and so they came all the way just to pick up on the BUC spirit and the spirit of God alive in this place. Give them a big hand. They deserve it. <laughs> And Peter Davison over here. So I, I thought we still had one Sunday, but we're going to. So, so you all know Peter, Peter is going in for special surgery, deep brain stimulation to deal with his Parkinson's in, it's about two weeks. And, but this is his last Sunday in church this morning. And he is understandably scared and nervous and the guy who's got more creativity in his little finger than most people I know um, I keep saying I trust the spirit is going to keep that creativity flowing afterwards and allow it to shine even more brightly through you I, uh, so let's all hold this fella in our heart and our prayers as he goes forward into this significant moment in his life Okay, 
And I also want to hold and lift, lift up for us this morning, um, Len and Gloria Churchill. Where, where are you both? You're, you're here right there. We all know about the, the huge, huge loss of, of their beloved son, Shannon. And anyways, our hearts are just all with you. So make sure, I, I, if we could give you a great big group collective hug, we would do that right now. But uh, we're, we're all there for you, you know that. And, uh, and a special, special service is going to be held at Alderney Landing next Sunday at, um, at 6. But I, I don't know what to say because it holds, have you made special plans? It holds 300 people, and I know there's going to be 1,000 people who want to be there. Um, so anyways, we'll sort that out. We'll sort that out. Love you guys. Okay. As Rick and our choir, and you're, you're wonderful. The music's just fabulous this morning. Thank you so much. Um, as... Nenzeni, what's, what's, Senzenina, yeah, Senzenina. There are so many folks in our community at any one time who are experiencing losses and challenges and struggles of one sort or another. And a huge part of what we're all about Sunday morning is often a time of lifting the roof and praise and celebration, but it's a time of gathering us all together so that we can be there for one another both in the joyous times, but also in the hard times. And that's what this is all critically about, isn't it? So, this morning, there's always so many things going on, but this morning, as we welcome Jason and new members into our church family, it's, uh, it's kind of a wonderful morning to combine that with something else that's going on in our community this morning. And this is... This is our um, kind of our volunteer recruitment Sunday. Um, in exactly one month from today, on March the 4th, we'll be holding our annual general meeting here at Bedford United Church. So we hold that once a year. And there's, there's many things that take place at that meeting, but one of the, the key things that we um, always do on that Sunday is we put into place a new um, roster of leaders and volunteers who will lead the community into the next year. And so council always needs to engage in, and the leadership teams behind the scenes need to engage in some preparation for that meeting. And they, they're trying to encourage people to consider stepping forward to, to be involved and to be engaged in serving through Bedford United Church in the year ahead and to consider the possibility that is my church calling me at this particular point in time to serve more widely in the church. Now, this year is perhaps that undertaking is, is more significant and critical than in many years, partly because of the, the significant element of transition that we will be going into in the, in the year ahead. Um, it's, with me departing at the end of June, me having been here 25 years, Bedford United Church by no means depends on any one person, including myself. Um, but for all my various gifts and strengths, but also my various faults and shortcomings and peccadillos. Is that, a, is that a word? I haven't used that word in a while. It just came into my mind, right? I, I don't know if that's a good word to use in this context or not, but anyways, that for all my shortcomings, there will be um, a more significant kind of transitional sort of a, a leadership void than usual, right? So that's, that's going to be a big change given that I've been here so long and, and we've done things in a particular way, right? And so it's it's really, really important as we move forward into this next year to really consider deeply the, the leadership resources that will help to carry the community forward into the, years, into the years ahead. And what I'd suggest to you is really necessary is what are we looking for in, in our leaders as we move forward into the year ahead? We're looking, we're looking for people who carry both um, who can provide the community with both a, a sense of stability and continuity, but we're also looking for people who can bring to the community 
new ideas, creativity, vision, and so on for the year ahead, for, for, the, for the future ahead, right? Um, we need people who can also say, this is the way we've done things over the years and this has worked well, but we also need people who aren't totally wedded to, to the past or to the ministry we've had over the years who say, yeah, but there are some things that we could do differently here and, and David and the leadership team did things this way, but why, why don't we try something else, right? So we need that kind of creativity. We need that kind of creative energy and thinking and visioning and new ideas to move us into the, into the future. And so as we do that, it's, it's going to be important, I think, for people to think about three kinds of things. We might need to have some people who have provided good leadership and resourcing for a community in the past. We need some of those people to continue to step up to the plate and say, we're going to continue to serve as we move forward into this transitional time, particularly because the community needs the stability and the continuity of established leaders. But it might also be useful to have some people who say, hey, you know what, I've, I've, I've served here for a long time in a lot of ways, and I do bring a kind of certain perspective. Maybe it's time for me to step back. Okay? So that might be a, a necessary possibility as well. And then we need other people in the community who are going to say, I haven't really, really stepped forward at BUC yet. I haven't really stepped into the, to offering my gifts and my leadership. And maybe this is really a, a good time for me to do that, right? We need all three. We need all three considerations to be going through all of your heads. Because we need the, the commitment and the contributions of everyone in the community. And so it's, it's, it's important to think during a transitional time what that might be looking like. I, uh, I was thinking about the um, scripture passage that I asked Linda to, to read this morning. And I, actually, you know, sometimes the way it is, you sort of think about your talk at the beginning of the week or the week ahead, and you think about what scripture reading do I want, and then you, to, you get to actually putting it down on paper and thinking about it, and you think, oh, no, 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 that's, that's not the best talk for me at all. And I, and I was thinking about the, that particular talk because I was, I was thinking about, obviously, Jesus also was, and, I've, and I've, I've identified with Moses in the past, today I'm identifying with Jesus, but don't, don't let it, it's not gone to my head, I'm just this particular function, right? So, so, Jesus also, any leader needs to, no one person can carry out ministry or any big undertaking on their own. It's always a team event, right? It's always uh, an undertaking of multiple people. And when we had these, this wonderful group of new people who stepped forward this morning, and what I always say to, since the Spirit of God shines in each and every one of you, together we so much more express the, the Spirit and the presence of God than any individual ever can, right? So, so Jesus, too, recognized this, and that's why Jesus called disciples and followers and a whole group of people into leadership with him. But, but this passage this morning is Jesus calling those people at the beginning of his ministry. And I was actually thinking, I probably should have looked for a passage with Jesus speaking to his disciples at the end of his ministry, right? And, and one of the, the passages that came to mind for me around that was Peter. So you remember Peter. And, and Peter has gone through everything with Jesus. Peter is kind of an impetuous and spontaneous kind of guy, and he's got some good gifts, but he's also got some weaknesses, right? And, um, and he goes through the whole trial and crucifixion with Jesus, and he kind of blows it in that whole time, right? He's, he's not there for Jesus the way he needed to be there for him. And yet, after... The, the resurrection appearances appear and the stories say Jesus meets with Peter after all of that happens. Jesus says to Peter, Peter, uh, I want you to be my rock. I want you to feed my sheep. And Jesus puts this question to him, says, Peter, will you follow me and feed my sheep? And Peter says once, yes. And, Peter says, and Jesus says, asks him the question twice. Peter says, yes, and then Jesus asks him three times. Peter says, yes, Lord. Jesus says, I'm just making sure, I'm just saying. Just saying, you screwed up big time once, right? So I'm just, I'm just making sure here, right? So, but the, the point 
in all of that story, and I think in the whole story of Jesus, is you don't have to be perfect to be a follower of Jesus. Is that a good thing? You don't have to be perfect. And you don't have to have all the skills and, and what's needed. It's not the point. Jesus also describes him as the, the realm of God and the, the, the realm of spirit as a, big, as a big tree or a big vine with many branches, right? What's important is that we all make our own individual contribution with a little bit of talent and gift that we all have, and some have more and some have less, but it's, it's the collective expression, the collective endeavor that matters. So sometimes we start thinking about ourselves as individuals, and, oh, I don't know if I can handle that, and it's, or maybe it's too much, or I don't have enough time, or, or I don't have the right skill, match, skill set for, for what the church is needing right now. Put all of that aside. Jesus says, invites everyone to be part of the team, to be part of the tree, to be a branch in the tree, and to contribute in the way that you're able to contribute, and not to carry the whole world on your shoulders, to, to do your part, right? And so that is, that is what this, this particular Sunday is, is about, is asking you to consider that. I need to say to you that although people change, the ultimate ministry and goal of our community is, does not change. Years ago, we were very, very clear about articulating who are we as a community and what we stand for, okay? And in that process, we created what are called, and those of you who came to our membership orientation seminar this past week, we created what are called our core identity documents. Any community to be strong needs to know fundamentally at the very core what it's about, what it represents. But then after that, people change up, people come and go, Ways of doing things can change, that's all okay, but you're rooted in a core sense of identity. And our core sense of identity here at Bedford United Church is rooted in the Bible. It's rooted in a couple of the United Church of Canada creeds. It's rooted in our mission statement. We have an inclusivity statement. That's a statement when we became an affirming congregation that we are welcome to not just the, the whole GBLT plus community, but we are a radically inclusive community for everybody. And we've also created a, a very strong value statement as well. And even the wording of some of those statements might change a little bit, but, but the identity that they express will, will be the same. And, and the statement that I've always loved the most is our mission statement. And I thought as, as we think about the future of our church, Although personnel may change and people coming on board and leaving may change and ways of doing things may change, this mission statement and even the way you express this mission statement may change, but the mission that's included in these words is not going to change. I'm trying to remember when we last sang this mission statement. I've wrecked you. It's, couple of years. it's been a couple of years now. Yeah. So we put this mission statement, um, we developed it many, many years ago. And then we, uh, former music director, Dean Bradshaw, put it to, to music, and, and we sing it. So we're going we're gonna to do that this morning just to remind you what is it that isn't going to change? What is the mission that we are all about? And that's going to carry us forward into the future. So, but before we put any words up there, Paul, or, or Anne, before we put any words up there, <coughs> how many of you remember it? So this is an example of, you don't all, all remember it, but those of us who do remember it are going to say it. So, so let's, let's, we'll just put the words up. Let's put the words up and we'll, we'll say it together, okay? Have you got them there? <clears throat> let's, no, we'll sing it in a minute, Rick. We'll just read it through once and then we'll sing it, all right? So let's read it together, all right? This has been the, the, the statement that has carried us through decades now and has informed our ministries and who we are, but it's still as relevant today as it was when we first started. And let's read it together. Our mission is to be a vibrant Christian community, worshiping God, growing spiritually, accepting all people, ministering to each other in love, and offering hope while working for peace and justice for all creation. Think about those words. 
Those are as relevant today as they were when we started them. And those words will carry this congregation into the future. So now, can we sing it? Remember, we put this to music. So I'm going to invite you all to stand. That's awesome. And, and you can't sing this. Our mission is... You have to sing this with gusto, right? You need to absorb it into your DNA, into your being, and to carry it forward. So, <clears throat> how should... Rick? <clears throat> Our mission is to be a vibrant Christian community, worshiping God, growing spiritually, accepting all people, ministering to each other in love, and offering hope while working for peace and justice for all creation. Do it again. Our mission is to be a vibrant Christian community, worshiping God, growing spiritually, accepting all people, ministering to each other in love, and offering hope while working for peace and justice for Isn't that good? That's awesome. Please be seated. <clears throat> so this is what we're about. And this is what's going to carry us into the future. And this is what we need to hang on to. And this is what you need to think about as, as today we're asking you to, to consider um, maybe is this a time for, for me to step up a little bit, okay? So what's going to happen? Val and, and Val, our past chairperson, is sort of overseeing the process, is the nominations chair. So what we're going to do is we're going to have numbers, we're going to have leaders from our variety of our ministry teams are going to be out in the foyer following the service, and they're going to be in all those little pods in the little, little seating areas. And there are signs on all the pods that indicate what team is represented there. And we invite you to just to spend a few minutes to, as you go out into the foyer and take a look at the, the names on the pods. There's also an insert in the bulletin that expresses some of the, the ministry needs and the volunteer needs that we have as a community going forward. And you can take a look at that as well. And, and maybe if, if you're interested, check off one of them. Val, that's... And there's a box in the back. Check off the form. Put it in the box in the back. Chat with some of the people. Some of our leaders will be in the foyer. And really take this as a time to really consider, is this a time for, for me to step up, to step forward into to leadership at BUC as we move into the future? This, there is going to be a significant kind of vacuum with my stepping away, and Diane is also going to be stepping away. And... And there will be some grief and loss for all of you in that process, and for me, obviously, as well, right? But on the other hand, as I keep saying to you, this is also potentially a very exciting time in our community. There's all sorts of possibilities for a wonderful ministry that lie ahead and, and ways of doing things differently that I would never have imagined and that I know there will be people coming forward here and saying, hey, let's do it this way, let's do it that way, and let's, let's express the Spirit of God even more dynamically through this community. And that will happen. And that is, that is something to look forward to and to feel positive about and something to seriously consider becoming engaged in and involved in. But you see, the Spirit in me honors the Spirit in every single one of you. Namaste. <laughs>
human beings were designed to be social. We need physical and emotional and spiritual connection with one another. So I'm going to invite you for just two seconds. Just look at the person next to you, behind you, in front of you. Just give a little eye contact for a second. A church is a wonderful place to come to interact with great folks who share your beliefs and your values. Gathering with others before and after the church builds community. And meeting throughout the week for committees and activities helps to create new friendships and gives you a sense of belonging. The church is also a place to come when we experience difficult times in our lives. It is a place of comfort and support. This week, Shannon Churchill transitioned after a long, brave journey with cancer. Our deepest condolences go out to Gloria and to Len and to the whole Churchill family at this time of deep grief. May they feel peace of heart through their faith and through the love of their BUC friends. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for creating in us a huge capacity for love. May we freely give our love in friendship, relationship, and in service to others. Thank you for the new members of our congregation, and may they grow in faith and fellowship here. Please ease the pain of grief that the Churchill family are experiencing. May the outpouring of compassion by friends and family lighten their sorrow and their faith lead to peace. May all of the interactions of this church fill us with feelings of community and belonging. We pray in the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Our closing song this morning comes from a later period in the history of slavery. At that time, there was a, de a desire to move away from songs of the past and to create songs of their newfound freedom. So let us go out singing for our renewed commitment to love and serve God. I'm going to live so God can move. Let's rise as we are able.
thank you, thank you to everyone who made this service possible today. And congratulations to all of you who joined our church. <laughs> I'd like to end with this poem by George O'Dell. We need one another when we mourn and would be comforted. We need one another when we are in trouble and afraid. We need one another when we are in despair and need to be recalled to our best selves again. We need one another when we would accomplish some great purpose and cannot do it alone. We need one another when we come to die and would have gentle hands prepare us for the journey. All our lives we are in need, and others are in need of us. Now we're going to see Amani. This is from South Africa. It's Amani. So not just Amen, Amen but Amani. We, we'll do the tune first. Amani, Amani, Amen, 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 Amani. That's it. Amani, Amani. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Good, let me hear you by yourself without the choir. Three, four. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Great, great, great. If you consider yourself a low singer, that part we just sang will not be what you sing. This is the low part. Ba -ba 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 -bum. If you're low. Keep going low, people. Keep going. Here's the melody. Amen, 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 Have a wonderful week.